Hi everyone, welcome back. This video is part of a playlist on Azure ML Studio, Machine Learning Studio, and AI Studio networking. Today we are going to talk about um, ML Studio and private with approved outbound setting, which is often referred to as managed VNet. It is the most secure design for enterprise workloads, and be sure to check out other videos for public access and BYO VNet as well. The focus here is more on the networking, security, and private endpoint aspects of ML Studio. However, we will train a regression model later for the completeness of the video and making sure everything works end to end. There are lots of moving parts today. We'll be looking at architecture diagram, VS Code, Azure Portal. So for the complete for the completeness, for a complete experience, um, I will be jumping between between the different um, and, and different parts of the uh, my desktop, and so let's uh, dive right in. What you see on on my screen, and if you've been following along with me. Um, you will see a hybrid cloud architecture. So we have an on-prem at the bottom. We have blue box, which is the Azure VNet, and we do have some existing PaaS services that the customer may already have. And then what we will do is, oh, and one more thing, if you are following along and navigating um, the draw IO, the, uh, today's option that we are looking at, uh, let me highlight that for you. Uh, the, the option that we will be focusing on today is option three, approved outbound is how it is labeled. With that, let's light up the approved outbound layer. So uh, again, we start with the use case. The use case here is secure enterprise AI workloads with private endpoints and managed VNet. We will deploy um, machine learning studio workspace and we will use this option let me make this screen a little bit bigger we will use this option private with approved outbound and you can check out my other videos for public and other options as well so let's um, see uh, what it looks like when you provision the workspace so let's light up the next layer here Oh, so the next layer actually shows the corresponding diagram um, that is in the Azure documentation. So if you click on that link, it will take you right there. Essentially, it's the same diagram. We have just added more layers for clarity. And so let's uh, it's an optional layer. You can hide it as needed. So when you deploy a machine learning workspace, it deploys um, really the workspace and all of the four PaaS services that are shown over here. Storage, Key Vault, Azure Container Registry, and Monitoring Insights. And with the third option selected, so the option with private, private with approved outbound selected, when you provision the machine learning workspace, um, we will not be able to access it publicly. So the top user is coming from out on the internet, so we will not be able to access it publicly. So what do we do? We project a private endpoint in the customer subnets. So in the customer's VNet. So in my case, I already have um, these two subnets, the um, pink boxes being subnets. And so we project that machine learning workspace private endpoint into the into the customer's VNet, and then we will be able to access the machine learning studio either from the virtual machine in Azure or from on-prem if um, provided the DNS is set up correctly. So anytime you have private endpoints, you do need to make sure that the DNS is set up correctly. So with that knowledge, let's go ahead and kick off the build out of the machine learning studio uh, uh, workspace. I'll show you first in VS code and then I'll show it uh, to you as a portal experience as well. So let's drop into VS code. 
And this is a dark screen, so I'll just explain the two parts of my screen. The top part is where I will select the command and I'll run it. And the bottom part is where the output of the command will be echoed. OK, so let's just make sure uh, that we are signed in. So I'll do this um, command here. And notice that when I, my cursor is over the command, it does highlight the line number um, so you can follow along with me. So let's uh, now that I see that I'm connected, what we will do is we'll create a demo resource group. And here I have a prefix set to say demo. Notice that there is no demo resource group right now. So we'll create first the prefix and based on this prefix, we'll create the resource group and the workspace. And we defined a bunch of other variables with existing VNet and subnet so that we can project our private endpoints. And then lastly, we'll create our resource group and we will create a container registry and important to note that this queue is premium and the reason being that um, only with premiums queue you can use private endpoints so we'll go ahead and kick off the um, build out of the container registry and then once that's completed, um, if you've been following along with me, you'll notice that I'm using this same workspace, um, build workspace script to build different options. So private option, uh, public option, BYO, VNet option. And, uh, and if we go down um, today, we will be doing the option number three. This is the one with internet uh, allow internet approved outbound okay so now that our container registry is uh, provisioned and we have the id let's make sure we are in option number three and we will go ahead and kick off this machine learning space build out okay so the most important option here is manage dash dash manage network notice it's still in preview but we'll go ahead and do it from here and it tells us that this option here, the manage network um, is in preview. It should show up there it is. Uh, and it does show that this is in preview. OK, so while the workspace is getting built out, I, I want to show you what the experience looks like from the portal. So let's go to. So first you will navigate to um, machine learning, Azure machine learning, and we'll do a refresh. Um, I do have a space created from before, um, but if you um, didn't have uh, one, you can create one. And the important thing to note over here is that it does provision, does ask you for a lot of the PaaS services. So storage account, key vault, app insight and container registry. So these are the default PaaS services. And then um, you can select the networking option. In this case, today's case, we are going to be using this private with approved outbound. And um, just like that, you can provision your new workspace. We already did it from the command line, but I did want to show you the portal experience and how you can provision this PaaS services. Uh, and one more thing, remember that if you are using container registry, um, be sure to use the premium SKU for private endpoints. All right, so with that, uh, let's go see if our workspace is provisioned. OK, so this is another useful troubleshooting trick that I would like to show you. Looks like our workspace provisioning failed. I ran into this a couple of times, so let me show you what to do if, if that does happen. Soft deleted workspace exists. So let's go back and delete that workspace and I'll show you where to do that. So let's cancel out of this and we'll refresh this. Uh, and you can see that there is this recently deleted uh, option and let's go and see. I may have accidentally left it in there, so let's go ahead and delete this workspace. So that is why it didn't create it. Um, so what we will do is um, we'll 
delete the resource group again and kick off the build out just to be uh, just to make sure that it is all clean. And while it is building it, there is a lot that I could show you in Draw.io. So let me also make sure that we uh, refresh the resource group and let's see if we still, let me just do a hard refresh. And we should see our demo resource group that we created. So let's find all the uh, resource groups starting with Studio. And you can see that uh, that's our demo resource group. We'll go ahead and clean it up. Um, it, it, given it failed because um, this, the soft deleted workspace existed. So let's go ahead and um, delete the one that says demo here. Awesome. So while while that is um, deleting, uh, let's walk through the draw IO and run through the envisioning session. So so far, what we have done, as you saw, I gave you two options to deploy the um, the AI uh, workspace. So let's light up the workspace layer here. So it provisions the workspace, the top box, and it also provisions all of the PaaS services. And with the public network access disable, um, we would project a, a private endpoint and then we can connect to it from on prem and from the Linux or, or from the Windows VM. I do want to show you the DNS zones that get provisioned behind the scene. So these are the two DNS uh, zones that will get provisioned behind the scenes. Uh, one is the notebook.azure.net and the other one is the API ML, API ml.ms and the corresponding IPs and everything uh, I did uh, the A records um, I have shown you um, over here. Okay, so then you can um, and and making sure that the VNet link also gets created, so then you can access the studio from your on-prem or this VM. We'll be doing most of the work from this VM. There's also an optional layer for custom DNS over here. Should you need to access it from on-prem, um, be sure that you have your uh, on-prem um, endpoints set up correctly, um, your on-prem DNS set up correctly. I have done full videos on DNS um, and on-prem configuration, so be sure to check out my other videos. So let me kind of go back to the compute layer now. So once we have the workspace created, we will provision the compute. And you need the compute layer to do any kind of machine learning um, processes. Uh, we do need a, a place to run the workload. So what we will do is we'll provision the compute layer. Now, when you provision the compute layer, there are a few private endpoints that get projected in this blue box. So given this is the third option, the, the private with approved outbound option, that's the key here. Oops. Uh, what will happen is the compute will get provisioned in its own VNet, the managed VNet, and the private endpoints for these PaaS services will get projected in the um, compute in the managed VNet. All right, so that's the, a very key concept where um, there are quite a few private endpoints, and I'll show you all of them, but these are the ones for the AI default PaaS services. Now let's go back and check that our um, resource group that the demo resource group that got um, deleted. Um, awesome. So that one's deleted and we also deleted the soft de deleted workspace. So let's go back here. Uh, let's clear this. This was good error to see in case you run into it. So let's go and kind of just run this again. We'll go through this quickly. 
Yeah, let's provision all of these uh, variables, set up all of the variables. And we'll create the resource group. We'll create the container registry. And we'll go ahead and create the option three. OK, so let's go ahead and kick off the workspace again. There are a few things I want to um, show you with a freshly um, created workspace, and once it is created, I'll show it to you in the Azure portal. Until then, let's continue to go through our envisioning um, session here. So, so far, we got these private endpoints for all of the storage, uh, all of the PaaS resources projected in the managed VNet. Now, there are a few other uh, private endpoints. So let's say that the customer had their own paths. They could project those into this VNet as well. So the green uh, lines are showing customers' paths. Of course, this is also customers' paths, but those are associated with the AI default paths. I do have some customers that use that bring their own storage for this. So that's also an option. And if that does happen, you can project these. The purple lines are showing that all of those um, and uh, past services are projected in the customer's VNet. So notice these orange are in the managed VNet. The pink ones are in the customer's VNet. And then one more layer of uh, private endpoints uh, is the blue ones. So should you need to project, for example, the stor storage or the search endpoints into the managed VNet, um, I'll show you how to do that in the portal as well. So quite a bit of um, private endpoints uh, over here. And of course, the DNS configuration for that should also be set up correctly. So again, to kind of light up all of the private endpoints one at a time, um, let me do that one more time. So these are the ones in the managed VNet for the AI pass. These are the customers. Um, these are the same path services projected in the customers VNet. And then the green ones are some existing path services. And lastly, the blue ones are the ones that are in projected in the managed VNet. So with that, um, this all of this private endpoints will facilitate your uh, machine learning prompt flows and other uh, machine learning uh, type of jobs that you need to run. So be sure to check out that when you're using managed VNet, all of the private endpoints are set up correctly. Now let's go see if our workspace uh, completed. Properly, yes, this time we were successful. So let me show you a few things uh, about a freshly uh, created workspace, and then we'll come back and finish our envisioning in the draw.io. So here, um, if you want to first go refresh our resource groups, um, let's do a hard refresh here. So we'll find all the resource group uh, with studio in it. And this is our resource group that we just created, where we just created the machine learning workspace. And as you can see, it created all of these PaaS services. So let's go and try to go in the machine learning workspace that we just created. And look at the networking options. So here you can see that the public access is disabled. Um, we have um, no private endpoints and we can see that no private endpoints yet. And we can see that our um, we did pick the um, outbound approved outbound there. And most importantly, you'll see if you open up this um, out required outbound rules, um, you will see that these are the private endpoints that got created. 
but they are in inactive state. So on a freshly created workspace, you will see the private endpoints and all of these rules are in inactive state. And why is that? That is because the managed VNet is not yet provisioned. So going back to our drawing board here, this managed VNet is not yet provisioned. Remember that that managed VNet will get provisioned. Let's unhide, let's hide this layer. And the managed VNet gets provisioned when you create the compute. So what we will do is I'll show you how to um, create the compute. And once the compute is created, those uh, private endpoints that we just saw will light up show show as active. So going um, going back to the portal here. Um, you could see that uh, we'll come back and we'll revisit after the compute is created. Um, so other thing I want to show you in a freshly created workspace, private workspace, is if you try to launch the video, I'm sorry, to turn, launch the studio, AI studio, um, it will fail. And why is that? It's because now um, this uh, workspace is private, so we will only be able to access it from uh, either within the VNet. Uh, yeah, there it, it is failing. So it the reason is that, as I showed you before, we will connect to it using the private endpoint. And if you want to see that private endpoint um, for the the studio, I'll show it to you in one of my um, existing existing workspace. In the interest of time, um, the rest of the work, um, we will do it in my existing workspace, but I'll show you the overall experience. So let's go back in here and I, I want to show you what happens when you create the private endpoint. So this the, the reason I created this demo workspace is so you could see what a, again uh, a free a, a first time when you create it, uh, what it looks like. So going back here, I just want to show you this uh, again. This outbound access is shows inactive. So now let's look at a resource group where the compute is already provisioned. And so here you can see that, um, let's go to the machine learning workspace here and networking. And you'll see that after the compute is provisioned, um, the experience is that it will all show as active. OK, and then I want to show you the private endpoint that I have projected in the customers VNet. Um, so this is our um, customers VNet app right here. OK, so then we can launch it from the. From this VM, so I'll let's now jump into this VM and then we will uh, run. I'll show you how to create the compute. So um, on the on the VM inside the the VNet that has the private endpoint, you can do ml.azure.com, and you will no longer get that message. Um, so even if we do portal.azure.com, oops. Um, we should be able to launch the. ML Studio from there, which was failing when we tried to do it publicly. So let me just do that real quick from here. And as you can see, this is that demo resource group. We'll go to the, the demo wor um, wor workspace and then we'll launch the studio. We will be successful over here. Um, we are not successful over here either, but I will show you why is because 
uh, we haven't projected, and this is the key difference, we haven't projected the private endpoint over here. Um, but in this one, uh, I, I have projected the private endpoint, so we should be able to launch it. So that's the key difference. And notice that little private icon, that one is important. So I'll show you that private icon here. So this private icon is important. So let's go ahead and um, go into the workspace. And I will show you how I created a compute. Compute creation does take time, so I already have created a compute which is running, but there are certain points that I will show you um, during the compute creation. So let's call this demo, and we'll go through the motion of selecting um, all the options, and this is the key option from the network perspective. Oops. This is the key option from the network perspective where it says this compute belongs to the managed VNet. All right, so that's that integration point between compute and managed VNet. So we go through next, next, and next, and then this is how the compute gets provisioned. So in the interest of time, I already have the compute provision. So let's go take a look. And so you can see that it the compute has a private IP and it has a public IP as well. So going back to the drawing board, let me show you where this compute got provisioned. So let's close this and we just um, provisioned this compute. And then all of these at that point, all of these private endpoints would also get light up, lighted up. So let's go and double check that in the portal. And so this is the workspace where I already have the compute. And so if you if you look at the uh, compute, uh, if you look at all of the private endpoints, they all show as active. OK, so it's important that they are all active. So now let's run some validations from the compute. So I'll jump um, on. I'll jump back on here and I want to show you. Um, so if you can see the IP address is 10205. So one way to run validations from the compute is I like to go on the CLI over here. And you can try a few things over here. So if you type, um, let's go and type IP adder over here, you could see that the compute got an IP of 10 to 05. Now, if we did an NS lookup, um, let's run a couple of dig commands here. And so if we uh, did an NS lookup here, for let's say the storage space that um, that we have, and so we'll I'll bring in um, the storage space. Um, so let's pick. Um, let's go back in here, and if we let's pick this storage account, and we will pick the endpoint. And because that endpoint is already projected. Um, in the managed VNet. From the compute's perspective, uh, going back here, um, I'll paste that here. From the compute's perspective, it's going to get the private IP of the storage space. And same goes, let's do one more test with the container registry or something else. So we'll just do one more test with the container registry. So we'll grab this um, FQDN and then let's run an NS lookup against that. So these type of validations are very important if something, if your DNS or something isn't working quite right. So if we do look that up, we also get a, a private IP over here. Now, and there is another important concept over here that I want to show you is outbound from the compute. So if I run curl ifconfig.com, um, 
me, meaning I want to see what is my IP. Normally, this would fail. The reason that it is working is because there is an important concept that I want to go over for outbound from the compute. So let's go back in the draw IO. Like I mentioned, this is quite action packed. I do have to jump back and forth between um, the draw IO and the, the VS code um, to, to make sure that I, I give you the full experience end to end. So now that we have projected this, uh, the way uh, this space works, the this two boxes, as you can see, I've marked it as red, is because out of the box, the outbound flows from the workspace are not allowed. In other words, we have to specifically allow the targets that we want to reach. And um, be, also make a note that behind the scene, there is this Azure firewall that gets provisioned here that I have shown over here. So there is a cost implication uh, with that, but you do have to allow specific uh, FQDNs outbound for that curl command that I was showing, the curl command with ifconfig.me to be successful. Okay, so first let me show you the outbound rule, and then I will um, show you that the curl command is indeed successful. So going back over here, we will go um, into the um, the machine learning um, space here. So I usually like to navigate it from the resource group in question, and then we will go to the one that's that I have already provisioned. Um, let's find the workspace. And um, if you go to the networking tab and if you go to workspace and outbound rules, you could see that I have created um, all of these um, outbound rules over here. And one of them is ifconfig. So I'm allowing ifconfig outbound. There are a lot of rules that um, I've added for Anaconda and Docker and others, and I'll show you the full list that we have published, but let's go ahead and complete that curl command over here. And there we can also go out from the compute. So that's the outbound flow from the compute. Now let me show you all of the rules that are um, that are needed um, should you need to uh, reach out for um, other uh, websites like docker.com or anaconda so let's take a quick detour here and i'll show you some of the important points that are noted in our azure documentation so here we are and all of these links are below um, so be sure to check it out but we are in workspace managed virtual network isolation part of the documentation and we are right here the topic of interest is allow only approved outbound and these this is how you will um, al allow the necessary fqdns and at the bottom we have shown a different use cases. It's a very detailed documentation with the different use cases, and I'll show you that real quick. Um, so, so the scenario for, for example, if you need machine learning packages, um, you know, you can uh, whitelist some of these FQDNs. OK, so the way again, I whitelisted those FQDNs is Going here, you can create an outbound rule and you can call it FQDN and just punch in your FQDN over here. So let me show you um, one of these rules that are already created. So if I go to ifconfig and that's the type FQDN, of course, you can do private endpoint and service um, tags as well. Great. So going back to the uh, going back to the whiteboard, I just showed you how uh, the outbound is from the perspective of the compute. And let's do uh, in. Let's look at the inbound flows real quick. 
Notice that I have a red box around this. That means no inbound is allowed either to the ML Studio workspace or to any of the storage, any of the PaaS services. The only way we can access them is this is through this private endpoints and all of the other private endpoints that that were projected um, before it does get fairly involved. Um, so I, I do want to make sure that that concept um, is, is is quite clear um, over here. So now that we have successfully provisioned the compute, the compute has outbound access. We, we, we looked at that inbound is restricted. The next topic we will look at is uh, we'll do some sort of uh, automated machine learning so I can show you um, that this works end to end. So let me jump back into the VM from which I can access the workspace. So once the compute is created, which I showed you over here, the compute is indeed created and running. Um, if you are a data scientist, uh, you would typically be working a lot over here in the um, machine learning studio. And um, today uh, what I will show in, in my other videos with public endpoint, I've shown you the full um, machine creating a new uh, machine learning um, oops, um, creating this new automated ML job. So be sure to check it out. But um, in the interest of time, it does take a little time. So I've created a machine learning job over here, but I'll walk you through um, this real quick um, just for the completeness of this demo. So you will select, um, you'll mostly go with the default. Um, the big item over here is uh, first you will create a data set. Um, so to create a data set, you will use, um, in my case, I've used the V2 APIs and ML table. And um, so you can just do a test here and you kind of go through this uh, whole workflow and I have uploaded it from local files and I have the bike rental uh, files um, uploaded um, onto my desktop and I have this bike rental data. So if you are not familiar with this, I did a deep dive video in my public um, option. So be sure to check that out. Uh, I will show you, um, I'll have all of the links below for this, but let's complete this auto ML flow here and we can pick, pick this and the regression model. We'll click next. And we'll pick the target column as rentals. We'll set these limits to be 15 and 15 and we'll check, check for early termination. Be sure to check those, otherwise it will um, take forever. Um, and th then you select the compute, you go next, and then you submit this training job. This training job does take a while, so we will not do that, but this is how you can create it. And um, I'll show you some of the links again here. So I, sh uh, I have this in the link below, but if you want to um, kind of run through the auto ML and how it works, there is an exercise off of this um, section of our Azure documentation. And if you launch this exercise, you will come to this page. And this is the page that I have followed uh, end to end um, to create the automated machine learning job that I just um, showed you how to do it. And uh, the the bike rental um, data set itself is in this aka.ms bike rentals, which I downloaded to my uh, virtual machine. OK, so that's how this automated um, job is created. Now that we have the job of completed and you can see the status as completed, um, let's look at our model summary. 
As you can see, our model summary looks really good. You could see that uh, we have the normalized root mean square error, which, uh, which is showing us um, it to be a 0 0.0. 0 0.07. The lower the value, um, the better um, the better it is. Um, the better accurate the model is. So that one showing um, this particular metric is showing us the difference between um, the predicted value and the actual value of our um, the our our model. And so if you want to look at uh, other metrics, you could you could do that. But for now, we will just jump into the model that we just created. And again, this is for the bike rental database that um, I showed you before in my public uh, video. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, deploy an endpoint um, so we can um, use the model so so far just remember that so far we we have um, created a data set we have trained the model we have evaluated the model and now um, and by evaluate i mean that we have looked at the model summary over here and then we can go and deploy the model so we can consume it all right so this um, the way that you would deploy the model is you will pick uh, in my case i've picked the real time endpoint and then i go through um, this screen so i'll show you two aspects that are important from the network standpoint and notice this public network access so you can deploy this as public or if you toggle this you can deploy it as a private endpoint so let's go through that And in the interest of time, I will not um, create this endpoint, but I have already created two that I will show you. And then you would hit create. And notice this one um, that you can create a public or a private um, endpoint, uh, managed online endpoint. All right, so let's cancel this. But after you go through this motion, you will indeed um, get uh, an endpoint. So then you will navigate to this endpoint. So I've created two endpoints, public and private. So let's look at the public one first. So with this, the observation here is that um, it should make sure that it's in success state is succeeded and that you have a rest endpoint over here and that you can test it. So notice that with this option, the networking option testing is disabled on this endpoint, but you can consume it using the rest endpoint. And I will either you could use it programmatically through your programming through your code, but in my case, I'm going to use curl with the rest endpoint, and I'll show you how to consume this. Um, endpoint. Um, so now let's let me show you the three things that are important on this screen. The first thing is the rest endpoint. So we should grab the rest endpoint of one of these keys. And then the third thing we will grab is this model. OK, so we'll grab these three things um, for both the public and the private endpoint. So let me show you the uh, private endpoint as well. So we'll um, similarly, we cannot test it through the portal, but we can consume it um, programmatically. So we'll grab again the private rest endpoint, the key and the model. Which is this one. OK, and I've already staged those, and so I will show it to you what the, that experience looks like. So now that we have the managed online endpoint deployed, let's um, let's run some validations. So first we will uh, use the public endpoint. So this is the command. We'll make sure it is indeed public. So you, you can see that I'm getting a public IP. And we'll, we'll remember we grab those URL, um, the the key and the model um, type, um, the model name. So what we will do is let let me run these. Um, let me set these variables. 
And then I will run this curl command. And there we got our predicted value as um, 310. So I get, just gave it some sample data and then we got the predicted value and that is using the public uh, endpoint. So now let's do the same thing against the private endpoint. So here I will run dig against the private endpoint. Notice the um, full FQDN is that an inference.ml.azure.com. So let's do a dig against that, um, the, the private endpoint. Oops. Let's do a dig. I uh, want to make sure we got the right endpoint. So we, for the private endpoint, we, we do have to go to that VM in Azure, but this is good for you to see. If you did try to resolve it publicly, um, you will get the public IP, but you want to get the, you want to go on one of the VMs that is in Azure, and then you run the dig against it and you will get the private IP. Notice this is in the customer's VNet. Now let's set these variables again. And we will run the curl command. Oops, I think I forgot the last bracket here. Um, so let's and there we got our predicted value. So our um, auto ML um, job um, did finish and we were able to successfully uh, run a query against it. In my uh, previous video, um, I did show you the full process and for complete lesson, completeness, let me show this to you here as well. And so here, if you look at the auto ML, um, kind of the overall workflow, we use the bike rental database um, to predict the value of the bike rentals um, using, um, you know, using the uh, temperature, humidity, et cetera. So this is, uh, this is the overall process. We were using that auto ML. We used the data set, we trained the model, we evaluated the model and then we deployed the model um, using those endpoints and then we consumed those endpoints. So let me show you the last stage of what we just did in this diagram. And um, what we just did is we deployed this managed um, online endpoint. So notice, um, this is the, the endpoint that we just deployed, but we deployed it, um, we deployed it as a private endpoint and as a public endpoint. Okay, so the really the flows would go like this. Even a user from outside can access the public um, endpoint and the user from inside can access the managed uh, the private one that we created okay so those are um some of the um, you know the the key aspects of um the flows and i will quickly show you um just for uh, completeness um the dns zones that are created so let let me just um, go into our resource group and i'll show you the two dns zones that uh, of interest and one is then we can look at the record sets here so these are the the record sets that get created and for the inference um, FQDN that we just saw, you will see that it it is it goes it has an asterisk. So if you deploy multiple um, endpoints, um, you will still be able to resolve that. And of course, the VNet link has to exist to the customer's VNet. And so this is the AP. This is the um, private link dot API um, dot Azure ML dot M, uh, um, dot MS, and then you also have this um, notebook. 
I'll show you the record sets for that one and then for this VNet links. OK. So that completes the endpoints um, discussion. And uh, let me show you a few more things here in the um, in the portal as well as in draw IO. So should you need to deploy this? So what we did was we deployed it as a managed online endpoint, but you could also deploy it as a, as a in your AKS cluster. And if you need to do that, um, the experience would look something like this. So let's go back into our um, auto ML job. There are a couple of different ways to navigate it. I, I like to go start at the job that I just finished. I go to the um, the model and then when we deploy it um, to an endpoint, you get the option to pick Kubernetes as you can see over here. Um, before we did the managed online endpoint and you could do um, Kubernetes. Uh, if you if you do do Kubernetes, you need the right extension. So um, let me show you that as well. So if you did deploy, um, uh, if you did want to deploy your endpoint in AKS, you need the machine learning extension. OK, so all of these links are below, but just so you um, just so you have it. And lastly, let me um, just go back in here and show you a, a troubleshooting tab that I have created um, as I was going through this myself and everything that I learned. So I've created a troubleshooting tab here. So basically, let me show you some of the common errors that I have seen. Um, so we'll start, we'll go from left to right. Um, this one was the error that I believe I showed you, the soft delete error at the beginning. Uh, we ran into this, so you can delete the recently um, deleted space. Um, that's that error. Um, you could go to the, let me make this a little bit bigger. You could go to the resource group and check out all of the resource group that exists. I like to kind of navigate from here. Um, if you did deploy a container instance, for example, you can click on that and then look at the logs from there as well. Um, there is, um, as, as I showed you before, uh, you cannot um, run testing the red box uh, on the endpoint, but you can consume the endpoint using the rest endpoint and the API key. Um, also, you know, if you get this error where you cannot access a workspace, it's because the workspace is private and I showed you this private icon before, so make sure you have your private endpoint set up correctly. And lastly, if you had missing VNet links, you may get a cryptic message like this. Um, and then this one um, took me a while to figure out, so I've kind of put it in here. I'm not sure uh, by the time you watch this video if it's fixed or not, but I did get this error when, when I selected the V1 APIs. Um, so in this particular demo, I did do um, the V2 APIs uh, when creating this data set. So this green box is showing create the data set and I, I used this V2 APIs to get past this error. Now let me make sure that I have covered everything that I need to show you in this um, in this demo and then um, we will close this out. Mm. Yes, so let's just go back in here one more time um, to kind of highlight the most important parts of this, um, this session. And again, all of these private endpoints are the key elements of this um, of this demo, so kind of going over it again, the orange ones in the managed VNet, um, also 
the same ones in the customer VNet. And then um, you could see that um, the customer endpoints can also, if the customer has more paths, they can be projected there. And then this is the this is the last one um, that maybe I should show you in the portal as well. So if you needed to project these into the managed VNet, yes, that was the part that I missed. So this is a good time to share that. So let me let me take you again to my um, VM here. And let's say that if you did want to project that one. Let's go back into the portal here. So the way I um, navigate this is I go to the resource group and then I go to the right workspace and for that last set of private endpoints. You go to the workspace managed outbound access and you create um, you add them using remember before we did FQDN, but you could do the private endpoint over here and then you can pick um, whichever customer paths a service you want to project in the managed VNet. And as you can see, I already have two. Uh, oops, uh, I have two. And again, this is under user defined rules. So I have two, one for search service and one for blob already projected using that same method. So not to confuse the user defined rules from the ones that are done by the system. So underscore sys ones are already created when you create the workspace and also of course observe this active um, status uh, as you are working through this. So with this, um, thank you again for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this session. Drop me a note or a comment if there is anything or if you have any questions or if you'd like to see any more videos on this topic. Have a great day.